Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to the Civic Camp Citizens Ward 5 Councillor Forum. Uh, thank you for coming out, or thank you very much for attending tonight and showing an interest in the issues that shape our city. Uh, my name is Jeff Bowes and I'll be your moderator for tonight. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Civic Camp, uh, Civic Camp is a nonpartisan public advocacy group enabling citizens to engage in creating a city that works for all of us. Any, can, any Calgarian is welcome to become a Civic Camper by visiting civiccamp.org and learning more about the organization and what values Civic Campers have set out for themselves and join up with the group that interests them. One of those groups is the Election Initiative Group. This group decided one of the best ways they could raise public awareness of civic issues during the election was to ensure a forum is held in each ward, something that in 2010 we became the first group in Calgary to do. So before we go further, I have a number of groups to thank. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all the Civic Camp volunteers who've donated their time to make tonight's event a reality. Uh, we couldn't have done this with a number of sponsors who've generally donated their time and services as well. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our host, Sunridge Mall, uh, for the donation of this venue. Uh, I'd also like to thank Calgary Sound Rentals and Calgary Roadrunners for providing the equipment for tonight's forum at a significantly reduced cost. Uh, I'd like to thank our media partners, CBC Calgary, CJSW, Fast Forward Weekly, and Metro Calgary for helping to get the word out on the forums. Uh, thanks to the Calgary Association of Parents and School Councils and the Alberta Teachers Association for their support with the School Board Trustees Forums. A big thanks to the Student Association of Mount Royal and the University of Calgary, uh, who've also uh, provided venues uh, for uh, Awards 11 and uh, Award 1 in the Mayoral Forum. Uh, and finally, thanks to the Calgary Foundation for helping us pay a few bills. Uh, finally, thank you very much to the candidates for coming out tonight. So, first I'll go over the ground rules tonight. Uh, Civic campers have called these the citizen forums. Uh, because the questions for most of the night have been, uh, have been gathered through the web. Uh, so people have been able to go to a user voice crowdsourcing site on the web, say what questions they'd like the candidates to answer, and then people have been able to vote on those questions as to which ones they'd most like to hear at the forums. Uh, so what we've done is uh, we're taking these questions, I'm just going down the list from the ones people most want answered. Uh, from most to least, from the most popular questions. Uh, Civic Camp has asked, um, uh, and here's where the format will work. So, moving along, so each question for the, the crowdsource questions, uh, each candidate gets, gets two minutes to respond to those questions. Uh, a little later on, we'll have what we call a how round, where I'll ask each candidate one question uh, about their platform, and they have a quick minute to describe how they're going to implement that. Uh, finally, we're also going to be taking uh, user, or, or uh, we're going to be taking uh, questions from the audience through the night. And there's uh, cards on that table over there. So if you have a question, please write it down over there. Uh, particularly ward-specific questions. Uh, we'll be going through that at intermission, and we'll be asking some of those after the intermission. Uh, and if there's some time after that, we'll return to the crowdsource questions uh, and go through those. Uh, each candidate also has three poker chips, which they can use at any time to uh, rebut a particular question, at which time they have one minute and 30 seconds to do that. Okay, working tonight with me, we have Emma over here on logistics. Uh, Peter over there is providing support. Uh, in the back, we have Chelsea, who is uh, live casting tonight's forum onto the web. All right, and so just on this note, a couple reminders, so please respect the clock. Uh, we have a timer to help you. The clock over there will show how much time you have while you're speaking. Uh, and so please deliver the response within the time provided. Uh, to make it uh, in easy for the audience to listen. We ask that everyone please not interrupt candidates while they're speaking. Uh, polite p applause is always a welcome, but uh, we'd like to avoid any other sort of commentary from the audience in the middle of it. 
Uh, and again, we ask that you please stay issue focused. So uh, we want to avoid any direct uh, personal references or criticisms of your fellow candidates. Um, and finally, um, we ask that all signs, I believe, should be on the table and outside the venue so that we ask that there's no campaigning within the venue here while we're going through the forum or during the inter intermission. Uh, so, to, uh, without further ado, I'd like to let the candidates introduce themselves. Uh, so, uh, each candidate has two minutes to provide an introduction. So, Paul, if you'd like to start and give an introduction for yourself. Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pratpa Dhariwal. Uh, I, I own a small family business. I have two kids, uh, my, father, my father and my mother. So I am a single parent. So I, I want to uh, like bring in public, public run democracy in the city of Calgary rather than uh, donations from special interest uh, groups. Uh, uh, taxi industry is my, my main, I want to make it a uh, campaign issue, taxi industry is an example, how donations like uh, run over uh, the uh, public and trust and basic rights of cab drivers and working class people. And I have small family business too, I have the experience with the city hall. I, I was very stunned to see how you run as a politician, you say small businesses are the backbone of this country. When you need uh, support from politicians, they, they told you to go to courts and you have to fight in the courts to, to get your uh, basic rights. Uh, I think the cab drivers, they are ignored for long enough for, to protect their basic rights and investment. and. Uh, uh, that's, that's one of the reasons I'm asking uh, there should be cap how much uh, civic politicians can collect and spend on civic elections so we can uh, take care about that uh, uh, special trust groups they are uh, paying donations to our politicians. Thanks. Sir. Thank you very much, Brick Paul. Ray? Thanks. My name is Ray Jones. Oh, go ahead. My name is Ray Jones. I've been the uh, Ward Alderman for the past 20 years. I've lived in Ward 5 for the last 37 years and I've lived on the east side of Calgary for the last 53 years. I know the issues in this ward and the wards around here. I meet monthly with my community presidents. We've got a good rapport going and always have had a good rapport going. We share our ideas. We get things done. And it's a great pleasure to see all of you here tonight. It's unfortunate there isn't more people. I'd like to see a couple of thousand people at one of these where you get talking to a lot of people because even when we go door to door, we notice that the apathy is unbelievable out there. Uh, it's probably going to be a vote, low voter turnout only because there's no mayoralty race this time. And it's going to be unfortunate that uh, you know, we'll probably be down to a 20 to a 25% turnout. We have a number of issues in this city. We have growth. We have sewers, we have waters, we have a flood that we had, the largest natural disaster in Canada's history. Uh, we have a lot of things that we have to do pertaining to the flood that's coming up. And uh, I just uh, enjoy my job and enjoy working with the people up there. That's all I have to say for now. Thank you very much, Ray. So we'll now move to the first round of the crowdsource questions. Uh, just again a reminder, you have two minutes to answer each of these questions. And uh, once again, if you wish to rebut your opponent after uh, they've spoken, please show me your chip and then toss it into your container and then you'll have a minute and 30 seconds for rebuttal. Uh, so we'll start with Ray first. So the first question is, do you support legalization of secondary suites in all existing neighborhoods subject only to reasonable safety concerns? Why or why not? Well, I absolutely do not support the legalization of the, of the blanket policy that allows secondary suites in every uh, zone in Calgary. If I'm not opposed, per se, around transit stations or post-secondary schools where they exist anyway, at least the legal suites. 
but it would be great to have uh, legal suites in the TOD areas and legal suites in and around post-secondary. Thank you very much, Ray. Quick, Paul? Just yes, I uh, strongly support legalizing uh, fraternity suites. I think it's a uh, help to have affordable housing uh, situation, and it it will uh, uh, it will take care about brawling over urban uh, new home industries. They are uh, uh, taking too much. We are expanding the city is expanding too much, so we need resources to take care of our communities. Uh, we are uh, building new ones. So I think, uh, uh, especially in Ward 5, we are family-minded people. We we like to live uh, together, close to our families, and maybe uncles, aunties, uh, parents. So I think secondary suites is a strong, uh, I strongly support. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Pripal. OK, the next question, we'll go to Pripal first. OK, how will you ensure all Calgarians have access to recreational and sports facilities they need for their ongoing health and well-being? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. Mm -hmm. How will you ensure all Calgarians have access to the recreational and sports facilities they need for their ongoing health and well-being? We should have... Uh we should have more, I think, recreations, and we should like uh, we should look into it as an investment. And uh, like I, I support like uh, uh, I think we should have my my main main reason to run for this. I think we are social-minded people. I think uh, we should bring families together, so they they they. they Bring, and they take their kids to have recreations. And I think how we, and this system, how we live, I think we are breaking up the families. I think family system is a solution for this, for this world. I think uh, more we have uh, families are together, more recreation, uh, we can take our, like uh, my, if my parents live with me, they can uh, take them for recreation or they can, my, uh, so I'm some kind of social minded people. Like I think we don't, uh, uh, that's why I'm one of the reasons I'm running for election. I think we need, uh, I come from a social based country. I think uh, we need those uh, social uh, structure. We should build strong families. So I think it's, it's a great, great way have to recreation and you have more time, you have more uh, sources. So, that's uh, that's my reason to to run uh, so we can uh, get message to this world so uh, to have uh, families together social system strong is a solution for this world thank you very much Paul. So. right well over the last couple of years the city council has put aside 42 million dollars a year up into the year 2016 to build four new recreation centers regional rec centers in the city of calgary uh, two in the south and two in the north. It's important that we get recreational centers in the, in the city so that there's uh, an experience by everybody. Uh, a couple of concerns I had was uh, when I first started in this job was we didn't have enough facilities in Ward 5. We now have Village Square, we have the Don Hartman Northeast Sportsplex and the recently opened Genesis Center. So we've done our bit in this end. One of the things that hasn't been really made public yet is the fact that we also have to do outdoor recreation. And one of the things that we plan on doing with outdoor recreation is there's a 12 to $13 million uh, expansion and uh, life cycle maintenance gonna be done in Prairie Winds Park. Uh, it'll be brought up, to, brought up to snuff and it'll be uh, a thing that kids can enjoy in this work. Thank you very much. Okay, the next question we'll start with Ray. Uh, with a vacancy rate, Approaching zero percent, what long-term action will you take to ensure young professionals and students have a place to live in Calgary? Well, that's actually a twofold question, and what I mean by a twofold question is it comes down to development and growth management as well. One of the things that uh, the development industry is trying to do in this city is get more growth and get a, a, a supply of land so that there can be enough houses and enough choices for people to live in. Uh, the industry employs 37,000 people. And those 37,000 people are integral to the city of Calgary because they're the second largest industry in the city of Calgary. So it's important that we keep the industry growing. 
The unfortunate part is we have parts of the city that have problems with sewer and water, and that's some of the things that we're going to have to look at, or the next council's going to have to look at. But we have stakeholders that uh, we have to deal with. We can't do it on our own. Thank you very much, Ray. Britt Paul? Uh, I kind of agree with Mr. Ray Jones. Uh, I, like, I don't have experience in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, question. I don't like to say something. I don't uh, research on something. So I, I don't have much to say. OK. Thank you very much. OK, Prit Paul, we'll talk, start with you for the next question. Do you believe that urban sprawl is a problem for the city? If you believe it is a problem, what will you do to address it? And yeah, what, will you, what would you do to address it? I think secondary suite is my, I think is, is uh, one of the reasons we should have second, legalized secondary suites. And I think we should have more maybe apartment blocks or we can, uh, we should encourage families to live together. We should have uh, sources so we unite families instead of breaking up families. I think we, we should uh, invest in uh, bringing families together, and that's my answer. Thank you, Thank you very much. So, sorry, could you repeat the question? I certainly can. Uh, do you believe that urban sprawl is a problem for the city? If you believe it is a pro problem, what will you do to address it? Urban, prowl, pr uh, urban sp sprawl is part of a problem, but part of the problem is, is the growth of the city. Uh, we have to do more in the, in the inner city. But the problem we have in the inner city, from what I from what I've experienced sitting on development field, is we have developers and we have builders that want to build infills and build multifamily in the inner city, which is where we should be going. We should be going up as opposed to out. But on the same token, we have the residents in those communities opposing the type that type of growth in their community because that's where all the single family homes are. As far as urban sprawl, there's a con there's a concern that the developers don't pay their fair share, and in in, in, in truth. That's not true. The developers pay 100% of the cost other than sewer and water, which is about $72,000 a year or per hectare. And that $72,000 is shared by the utility and all Calgarians. So the developers are putting in their share, but if you want to put in an additional $4,500 like the mayor is asking per house, it uh, begs the question, is affordable housing going to be there or not? Because that cost gets borne by the end user. All right, thank you. Okay, Ray, the next question will go to you first. How do you think we can create greater mobility choices, biking, walking, and in transit, in addition to cars, in the city and in your ward in particular? Give me that again. Sure. How do you think we can create greater mobility choices, uh, for example, biking, walking, and transit, uh, in the city and in your ward in particular? Now, the unfortunate part is we are a winter city, so there's less biking and walking in the wintertime than there would be the rest of the year round. But we have one of the best pathway systems in North America, and it's renowned for that. Unfortunately, with the recent floods that we had, we knocked a number of kilometers of the, of the pathway system out. It does surround the city. We've worked hard in this ward to deal with the Parks Foundation to build the greenway that's going down the, uh, the east side of the city between the, uh, the uh, TUC and the, the communities which has been very accepted in this ward, and it's been a great addition to the ward, actually. And working with Myrna Dubé at the Parks Foundation, we've also had them in and around the airport. The biggest problem we have in this ward is the fact that we have poor connections to Deerfoot Trail or across Deerfoot Trail. We seem to be the part of the city that's put off to the side. But we have added in the inner city about, uh, I believe it's 26 kilometers of uh, on-street pathways or on-street uh, bike paths and we're continuing to do more about that. Uh, it's a pretty sad commentary to say that we only have 26 kilometers of pathways, when indeed we have 18,000 kilometers of roads in the city. So I think it's up to each ward to, make, to come up with some ideas on how they want to expand that. Okay, thank you very much. Great, Paul? Yes, sir, I think Mr. Nahid Nancy, he, he very extensively worked on this issue. I think. Uh, uh, we no need 
like uh, more expertise uh, than Mr. Nihid Nancy. And he, uh, I think uh, uh, new home industry, they are number one paying donation to civic politician. I think uh, like we, we need like a politician as Mr. Nihid Nancy and other uh, like-minded people so we can invest more in, in those uh, cycling uh, like uh, footpaths and we should have uh, I think we are going in the right direction so I think Mr. Nih I, I support Mr. Nihil Nancy for his very uh, serious work about this uh, issue. Thank you very much, Pripal. All right. Next question goes to you, Pritpal, to start with. Uh, what would you do to support the Calgary Pow Poverty Reduction Initiative, and how would your efforts improve that initiative? How we can uh, solve the poverty? Poverty Reduction Initiative. I think, uh, like, uh, I think our democracy is run by, run by corporate system. They're not uh, run by public. To, uh, even like in India, it's, it's getting some people, it's a desperation. People, some people, they don't know what uh, about their wealth, and some people don't know what to do with their basic needs. I think we, uh, we need to rethink, like, whatever we are uh, concentrating, like, a corporate, is it a corporate-run system or is it democracy run by public? I think we, we need to more media, they, they need to, uh, like, uh, even, uh, like, media is, is uh, looking for sensations or they're not looking for solutions for, for public or base, base, uh, basic needs of, the, of our uh, uh, people in this uh, world, I guess. Thank you very much. Ray? Yeah, that's, an that's an interesting question because technically it's not a civic question, it's more of a provincial question. And what I mean by that is, is one of the things that came before our council a year or so ago was the living wage. And I think one way to address poverty is dealing with the living wage, where in, in Calgary we're probably the second or third lowest paying uh, city in Canada. Uh, a living wage in, in uh, or a wage in Calgary is between nine and ten dollars for minimum wage. And if you take a look at other places in Canada, it's a fact that uh, you need $13 an hour to live and about $14 or $15 with benefits. And people have to get to that, that stage where they can afford to live on their own. We have, I, I know it's over 100,000 people in this city that live below the poverty lab. And it's unfortunate, but, and a lot of that's got to do with the fact that there's no living wage. But I think it's more of a provincial issue than it is a civic issue. Thank you very much, Ray. Uh, so the next question will go to Ray uh, to start with. Uh, so with government initiating a plan to support local sustainability in the food system, can we expect a positive move towards urban agriculture in Calgary? You know, just a couple of weeks ago, I spent a day with Calgary Grow, or Grow Calgary, I should say. I spent the day with a man, and I, I went out to the, uh, I shouldn't say grow up, but it's uh, <laughs> That sounds kind of bad, but it was uh, an opportunity to go out and see where the, uh, the gardens that were built out by the Pascapu Slopes. It's amazing, they got 11 acres given to them and they've, uh, they, they've only got about two or three acres for at present uh, undergrowth and all the food that they grow goes to the food bank. They're looking for other opportunities. As a matter of fact, I made a donation to the, uh, to the agriculture uh, group at that time and I uh, think it's a great idea. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of vacant land in this city that could be used for that purpose. We have a number of people from Northeast Calgary that go out to this growing operation, and uh, they're wishing for places where they could have community, I keep wanting to say grow ups, even though I know they're not grow up, but they uh, continue to, to uh, go out there and uh, do these gardens and community gardens, and I think it's a good idea, and I think it should be utilized more on the vacant lands across the city. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I think uh, we need uh, like uh, extensive, like uh, in our uh, home home yards. So how we can grow uh, and start growing grass. So we should have like it will save water and it will uh, save. Our, we are using pesticides to to take take care of water and and we spend a lot of uh, energy. 
I think we need to uh, look into how uh, city they should have some kind of uh, uh, invest in so, uh, to educate people and we uh, enter who, who they can educate the public how, how they can uh, grow uh, uh, vegetables or healthy food, uh, vegetables and like I come from a back home like we are a farming community most I think we we need to like uh, use their skills and uh, their interest in this uh, in the gardening or, or agriculture base. So. Thank you very much, Pritpal. Um, the next question, which will go to Pritpal first, is: Will you commit to releasing a list of your campaign donors before election day? Why or why not? Yes, it's, that's my uh, main one of the main reasons why I'm running. I think we should we should have accountability and civic politics. Uh, I I used to live in Winnipeg. My father-in-law he was working on a senior center. Uh, he he wanted to build a senior center. One of the eldermen he promised him he will pay pay them twenty five thousand dollars donation. I was surprised how much money as eldermen they they make to to donate somebody twenty five thousand dollars. I think what they do like they favor uh, somebody's. Uh, uh, they got donations like to the back corporations or something. They they do their uh, uh, favors and then then they buy votes. Like then they pay. Like uh, uh, it's not possible if you are a, uh, running as a uh, uh, liberal or or NDP, uh, you can't uh, collect money and buy votes. I think that's the civic politician they do to to stay in power. So they collect money and and buy votes by donations. So I think we should have very uh, clear who is paying, how much they are paying, and how much they can collect or spend in civic elections. Thank you very much. Ray? Well, this is going to be a quick one for me. Yes, I would, but no, I can't. Yes, I would release it, but no, I can't, because the person that does my financials is out of town for the next two weeks. He's on a cruise, so no, I can't. I wish I was on a cruise with him someday. All right, thank you, Ray. Uh, the next question is, what would you do to get the McLeod Trail Sun Valley Boulevard interchange built to reduce shortcutting traffic on Sun Valley Boulevard? They come in the order in which they were picked, so. I don't know how to answer the question because I'm not aware of the issue. Uh, you know, you deal with mainly with the traffic issues in your own ward and the, the adjoining wards. You don't deal with ones that are in the far south, uh, and I, you know, it's the first I've heard of it. So. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Pred Paul, do you have a? No, sir. I I don't want to answer something I don't have a research on. Like, uh, I just want to pass on. This, this. Okay, fair enough. I be happy to to learn it more and, and next maybe uh, next time if we have chances, I I can provide looking uh, provide answer. Thank you. So once again, I'll just remind these, everyone these questions are all crowdsourced and essentially I'm delivering them by the popularity of the question. No. Uh, all right, so the next question to Pritpal first is, Calgary is the only Canadian city of its size with no municipal grants for artists. What role should the city play in investing in its artists? Uh, art, I think uh, art is a part of human being when, since we step on this planet and I, I think it will be uh, tell our last, last uh, step on this planet. And my daughter, she is, uh, she is very good at art and, and her art always was on, on her uh, principal's office. I think we, we need, uh, sometimes we are looking into investing in, like uh, I think uh, we, we need to, like people who, who do a lot of good things for this world, they didn't do it for uh, money or for, they, they were looking for good, good well-being of this world. Uh, yeah, I think we should look, at, because the world is run by money, so we should, we have, we should invest in, but I think uh, we, 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 we should more appreciate whatever people are, like, uh, do for, for, for this world better than just uh, uh, compare it with how much money we are uh, investing in. So I think those people, they need 
appreciation whatever we we do and yeah this uh, everybody have to make their living and we we need to invest in uh, in art thank That's you it. very much Ripple. Great. can can i ask you a question with a question uh, the question was asked that we don't put any money into the arts uh, no I'll, I'll repeat the question so cal the the presumption of the question is Calgary is the only Canadian citizen of city of its size with no municipal grants for artists uh, and if that is incorrect if that's an incorrect presumption feel free to rebut that and then your the follow-up is or the question within that is what role should the city play in investing in artists well I would question the question because I know that we put five million dollars a year into CADA which is dispersed amongst the arts community we have what's called the Council Strategic Initiative Fund, which is about $700,000 that also goes out to arts and culture. Uh, we have a program where whenever we build infrastructure in the city, 1% of that infrastructure money goes to artists and art in the city. So I would say the city is doing its part in giving money to the artists. Okay. So the next question is for you, uh, we'll start with Ray, is uh, where do you stand on the cosmetic use of pesticides in Calgary? You know, it's, it's one of those ones that's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you don't use the pesticides, the people complain about the bugs, and they complain about the dandelions, and they complain about the weeds. If you use it, they complain about the pesticides. I agree that there should be, I, I think there should be a controlled use of it. In the, in, the, in the sections that we deal with up here, I know that when they, whenever they do a park, they post the park. They post everything that's being done and tell the kids when they can and cannot play with it. But I understand the concern as well, but I think it will probably be phased out over a period of time. But a lot of it's got to do with the fact that the city's got to do a better job at it. Thanks very much, Ray. Pritpal? Yes, I think uh, I mentioned it before, like I think we need to invest in how we can make uh, those uh, uh, home yards uh, environmentally friendly. Like we, we uh, waste a lot of water and water, uh, like chemical resources to just uh, cosmetic reasons. I think we have a lot of room, so, so we, can, we should have an entrepreneur who can uh, give us uh, ideas uh, how we can have uh, environmentally friendly yards. Even like uh, I have a new home. Last uh, one year I'm looking for somebody to, to guide me how I can uh, have my yard uh, uh, without any uh, grass or, or uh, I can grow more uh, vegetables and stuff. We don't have much uh, investment in like, uh, taking care of our environment, even like pollution, ca some cars, your, if you're going, driving behind a car, you smell like a gas. Uh, I think we need to look into those uh, environmental issues. A human is a social animal. We need social sense and good environment to survive. Uh, we have to eat food end of the day. We can't eat gold. I think we, sometimes we are, uh, like even if you uh, uh, get rid of grass, we are not losing jobs. Like. Uh, we are not hiring people to cut the grass or to, to uh, uh, water it. I think we need something environmentally friendly, yards from City Hall. We, we need extensive research how we can uh, uh, encourage people and how we should get them uh, better alternatives uh, like financially or we, can, uh, we need to look into how we can uh, encourage our community to have healthy yards. No, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to break for 15 minutes. Uh, so we will start uh, again at, um, we'll actually we'll start again at uh, 8.05 for the second round. Thank you very much. You each have two minutes to answer these questions is do you support a city of Calgary living wage policy? You mean how much we pay? Uh, like, do you support a living wage policy like? Yeah, like minimum basis? 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I would define that as a minimum wage that uh, people can live on. Yeah, we should have minimum wage. Uh, yes? Or yes, we, we should have minimum wages and I think uh, we need to concentrate on our like uh, main I think those those people are there, there are majority of them. I think we need to uh, it's a good for the economy and it's a good for well being of the family and I think it's good for the world. Like sometimes uh, some people don't know what to do with the wealth. Even like in India, like they are investing, they are putting money in Swiss banks. And some people, they are struggling for their basic needs. I think we, we need to have fair uh, economic uh, policy. So we should have like uh, some room. People should have big dreams. So that's, uh, uh, so what we should take care of our people's basic needs. I think, uh, and especially in Calgary, people have a hard time. I have a small family business. And I see a lot of people, they are having uh, social problems, health problems, economic problems. So I think they are, I think we are, uh, uh, we are uh, like uh, creating some kind of desperation with, between uh, 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 how we structuring our economic structure. So we should have here, uh, so everybody should have uh, take care of all their basic needs thank you very much Ray? i i actually answered this when we talked about poverty reduction but i'll answer it again uh, calgary is probably the second or third lowest paying city in canada uh, i believe we're between nine and ten dollars an hour for minimum wage uh, in order to make a living wage you have to make about thirteen dollars an hour or fourteen dollars and fifty cents an hour to, fi to fifteen dollars an hour with benefits in order to make a living. There's probably about, I think, there, I believe there's just a little over 100,000 people in this city that are $6,000 below the poverty level. I think it's very important that we invest in Calgarians and we invest in their futures as well. Even though I continue to say that it's more of a provincial item than it is a civic item because it's the province that can dictate what minimum wage will be at, not the city. But I think it's something that uh, council has endorsed in the past and would probably continue to endorse in the future. Thank you, Ray. Uh, so the next question will go to Ray to start with. Do you believe that Calgary requires a city charter? What powers does the city need that it does not currently have? Well, the city's been fighting for a city charter for a number of years now, and the reason being is our only form of raising money is through taxation. And you take a look at it, uh, you know, we can do things through the development industry, the elections, the uh, the uh, taxation in the city. I mean, one of the ideas is that the, uh, the dollars that goes into hotels should be uh, done to promote tourism in the city, and it doesn't necessarily go that, that spot right now. It goes to the province, and they've got a bigger pot than we have. Okay. Thank you very much. Pritpo? Uh, sorry, sir, I don't have, uh, like, uh, I don't uh, have much to say about this question. I want to uh, research on this one. Like, okay. Can you repeat it, if I help? Uh, sure. Do you believe the city of Calgary requires a city charter? What powers does the city need that it does not currently have? Uh, sorry, I don't even understand this. But I, I think we need some kind of uh, ambassador. Uh, maybe I, I'm, I'm not answering your question, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say something. Like we should have some kind of ambassador in the city. Like if you're a small family business, like now we talk about minimum wages or for the work, I have a small family business. I'm struggling with the city of Calgary to protect me, my basic rights. Uh, you don't have any, like if you're losing a job because of racism or something, you can go to human rights. If you're a small family business, there's no, no one protect, protect. We should have some kind of maybe city level or provincial level. We should have, uh, uh, like if you are a big corporation, you can pay donation to our civic coalition. You can do whatever you want. But if you are a small family business, uh, I think uh, you, you are bumping into brick ball. They will tell you to go to courts. You can't fight with the city hall. 
uh, to hire expensive uh, lawyers to uh, to get your uh, to to survive i think we we need some kind of ombudsman or something so if you are uh, ignored so we should have like uh, some kind of uh, people can help you if you are not getting fairness uh, through our political process in city hall thank you very much uh, this next question we'll start with Pripal. What is your stance on social housing? Do you think the city should support the development of social housing? And if so, how? Which housing? Social housing? Social housing, yes. What's the social housing? So, government subsidized housing. Is it like affordable housing? Thing? Yes. Yeah, I support uh, affordable housing. Yes, uh, I think uh, the way our economy is structured like uh, uh, people are struggling, like uh, we are homeless, even like uh, we see like a uh, lot of even people in downtown, they should have somewhere to go to take a bath or they should have, even they don't have uh, going for washroom and stuff. So yeah, we should, we need uh, to invest in affordable housing so we can take care of our people basic needs. I think we can, and we are richest country in the world. I think we are most kind, uh, kind country in this world. So I think we should not be facing these issues. I think we are doing something, we are not doing something right if we are still talking about those issues. Thank you very much. Ray? Give it to me again. Sure. What is your stance on social housing? Do you think the city should support the development of social housing? And if so, how? Well, I believe in social housing to a point that the city should be responsible for. But all, once again, there should be a responsibility as well with the provincial and federal governments. Uh, we have the Calgary Housing Company in the city of Calgary where we have about 4,500 units. Uh, we also have what we just started in the last couple of years, attainable homes, so that uh, first-time uh, buyers can get into sustainable homes or attainable homes, I'm sorry. And these are people that are usually coming out of Calgary Housing. It's important that the, uh, all three levels of government work on this because there's a number of people below the poverty line that can't afford it. There's a number of people on H that can't afford it. And it's important that uh, all three levels of government uh, get together and do something about that. Thank you very much. Ray, if elected, how will you repair flood damaged public infrastructure and strengthen Calgary's flood mitigation policies and infrastructure? Well, it's probably going to take a couple of years to do. I, I realize that uh, the flood caused over $5 billion worth of damage. The greatest percentage of that is coming from the federal government and the province, and the balance will be coming either from our reserve funds or from our insurance policies. But it'll take a no uh, quite a bit of time before we see a lot of things re-established. Re okay. Thank you very much. Prit Paul? Yes, I think we need to invest in like how we how we can take care of it so we don't have to face this flooding. Like in Winnipeg, I think they have uh, like a, a flood pathway. So we, we need to more invest in so how we can uh, avoid uh, these situations. Uh, yeah, we need to uh, look into how we can discourage people. So if they are uh, uh, flood uh, prone areas, so we need to look into how we can, uh, we should not, uh, like now we are housing industry and stuff, they're paying so many donations to our civic politician. I think uh, they ignore and they, they get their ways, like uh, they do whatever they, they want to do. So we need to look into how we can regulate and how we can take it serious so those uh, we don't have, we shouldn't be facing those. Uh, we should avoid, uh, instead of paying uh, to our uh, flooding damage uh, from our uh, taxpayers. So. Thank you very much. Uh, Paul, what is your stance on the city's curbside recycling plan? Would you extend the plan to include recycling of organics? Yes, sir. I, I'm very concerned about uh, environment uh, issues. I think uh, we are not uh, doing even basics like uh, uh, 
uh, we are not even like thinking about uh, I, I write a letter to the uh, before we have these recycling programs I write a hundred of letter to city of Calgary so we should invest in more recycling even like uh, now uh, I think we should have uh, environment uh, like uh, pollution people have uh, cars they they're making uh, too much pollution they should be looked into and, and they should be fixed at uh, uh, good price like we should look into how we can pay uh, we can talk to uh, Canadian Tire or somebody so they can say for environment uh, uh, they can give good price to fix those environment uh, so the cars can be more environmentally friendly so we need more uh, un uh, like uh, pay attention to our environment those uh, uh, like recycling and uh, even like uh, if we can do at home like some some cities they have like you can decompose we, we should have uh, better than we collecting so much uh, and then we go for uh, to uh, i think we, uh, some people they can do at home like we can we should decompose and we should uh, look into how we can uh, make it successful Thank you very much. Ray? Well, the city of Calgary has a great recycling program that we just started. We're one of the last cities to do it. We have the black bin for garbage and we have the blue bin for recycling. And now we've started a pilot program in four communities in the city of Calgary for, for composting, which is a green bin. Uh, we're doing a pilot program in these four communities, one in each quadrant of the city. Uh, it's important to know that 90% uh, of the people agree with it, or better than 90% of the people agree with it, think it's a great program. Uh, we've committed, uh, I believe it's about $60 million into building a recycling center that'll be uh, utilized for this purpose. And it should come, the pilot program ends, I believe it's in March of next year, and uh, then the whole city will end up, if, it, if it's a positive response, which it is to date, uh, the whole city will end up on green recycling. Thank you very much. Ray, what is your view on the framework for growth and change? Will you vote for it and why? Well, you know, that it's a difficult one to answer because it's, it depends where the growth is and it depends where the change is. We've got a number of cells in the city of Calgary and it depends where people want to live. It's got to be driven by the will to want to live there. We've got a number of uh, developers that are coming forward with plans and drawings and ASPs, uh, the area structure plans. Unfortunately, we can't do them all at the same time. We just don't have the money. The, the downside, well, the upside is, is the fact that the development industry pays 100% of the cost. The downside is with growth is the fact that when we're building these kind of uh, uh, new communities, and some of them are 50,000 people strong, is the fact that we as a city have to pick up the cost of the operating, whether it be uh, police, fire, transit, uh, sewers, and type, those types of things, and we just don't have the money to incorporate that. So as far as uh, growth management, I'm in favor of it uh, to a point. And as far as uh, looking after con controlling the areas, I think that's something that has to be done. We have a problem with sewers in the northwest part of the country, or city, sir. Thanks very much. Rick Paul? I think Mr. Ray Jones, he has more experience than me to answer, I think. Uh, so, uh, I, I like to maybe hear more from Mr. Ray Jones. Uh, I think uh, I don't have much experience in this uh, issue. Great, thank you. Uh, recognizing this is somewhat similar but more broad to an, the earlier question on recycling, uh, Pripal, what efforts would you make to make the city more environmentally friendly and sustainable? Uh, my uh, main issue is uh, uh, like our house yards. It should be more environmentally friendly. Now we are uh, putting too much grass. So we should have people that do grass because they, th they think it's a, uh, it's a uh, more uh, cost effective. I think we should alternative. We should look into how other companies they can give us uh, alternative. So we, how we can find uh, we can replace grass. I think that's the uh, like even dandelions and and that stuff is I think part of because of grass. 
So as we look into how we can uh, design our our yard environmentally friendly, uh, it has a great it will be great impact how we uh, uh, how we can make our city environmentally friendly. Thank you very much, Ray. Well, I think the city of Calgary does, has a great environmental plan. I think they do a great job of it. I think part of the problem is is the individual homeowners. I mean, when we send people out to do uh, mitigation or uh, uh, pesticide use, we use professionals. And professionals measure what they do. Uh, you take uh, Joe Average Public will take a wonder bar and weed his lawn and then complain about the dandelions that are, and the mosquitoes that are being uh, put aside by the city, uh, whereas he's using more pesticides on his own lawns than the city is. So as far as I'm concerned, the city does a great job because we use professionals to do it. And we have great employees in the city that do this for us as well. All right, thank you. All right, so the last question before we move on to the how round, uh, and we'll start with Ray on this one, is how do you feel about the city's current relationship with our First Nations communities, and what do you think needs to change with that? Well, we have a good re working relationship with the Satina, uh, which is the biggest neighbor that we have at the current time. They're, they're on the southwest uh, edge of the border. Uh, the mayor has been in constant contact with them about this, uh, the uh, southeast ring road. Um, and basically, I think we have a great rapport with them and have over the last number of years. And uh, when we built the uh, interchange down on 37th Street and uh, Glenmore Trail, it was within conjunction with the stakeholder, which was the natives and or First Nations. And uh, I think we do have a good relationship with them. All right. Thank you very much, Ray. Kurt Paul? Yes, sir. I think we need to s celebrate uh, our differences, like uh, same thing we, we face uh, situation in Quebec. I think uh, uh, even like native people, uh, we have to, we, we, our body is changing faster than we are ready for it socially. I think uh, under economic, uh, under pressure of economic based system. I think we have to uh, like uh, celebrate people's differences, we have to look into as a positive, uh, rather than we are looking into uh, how how we can uh, overnight we can look same or we can talk same or we can walk same. So even like if you are burka or something, so some people just feel uh, so offended. Like we have to like I a small fan when I was stunned how people they. They are not acting, they are offended, but they are really offended. When you talk to them, and they, they really uh, appreciate, uh, like uh, if you talk about turban, if you talk about, uh, 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 na like native people, I think we need to celebrate uh, how strong, like uh, native people, they were all, of, all over the world, even like in India, like we need to celebrate their, their strength. We need to celebrate who, who they were. Uh, and they, they need to celebrate their uh, their forefathers. Like even in our community, we 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 celebrate our like some people uh, feel offended why you are celebrating this and that. I think it's it's our uh, it's make our uh, strong community when we understand each other, when we uh, we uh, respect each other. Even like we have to criticize either we have to understand here we have we have to discuss religion, social systems, political ideologies. We, we have to... Thank you very much. All right, for the next question, uh, this is just one quick question that I've uh, either talked to you or looked at something from your platform, and uh, you'll have one minute to answer it each, and it will be about a piece of your platform, and the question will be, how will you go about implementing that? Uh, so we'll start with Prip Paul on this one. Uh, so you have said you would like to change the model of the taxi industry within Calgary. How would you do that? Like uh, city of Calgary, they they uh, uh, gave 900 taxi places to a couple of brokers. I think this system was designed to fail, or it was designed to abuse. Uh, Laidla company, uh, like they they try to follow the laws, but they fail. When those uh, those taxi players go to brokers we have right now, they abuse every taxi by law to fill their pockets. I think we need uh, issue 900 taxi players to broker uh, to drivers so we can create competition better than dispatch companies. So 
if I'm uh, if I'm get yeah. elected within six months, I will give model to the city of Calgary. It will be um, uh, it will be example for other cities how we can how we can solve our taxi issues rather than uh, our taxi industry is uh, example for other cities how cab drivers they are fighting up to Supreme Court and public is uh, uh, frustrated they are not getting uh, busy phone lines. So we need to look into this. Thank you, Prep Paul. Uh, just one difference on this round from the other round is the candidates in this round cannot use their poker chips to um, add to the other person's uh, comments. So, Ray, you said that you would like to focus on livable communities with all the many all amenities planned from the start. How would you go about doing that? Well, I think it's I think it's very important that what happens is is when you're building a community, it's important to know if there's going to be a school there. It's important to know if there's going to be a recreation center there. It's important to know if there's going to be parks built in the area. If there's important to know if there's going to be off-leash or on-leash dog runs in the area. Because when people make a move in, they're at, the they're at the mercy of the realtor. The realtor can tell you all kinds of stories and tell you things that are happening in that community. And then you buy in the community and find out there isn't going to be a school, there isn't going to be a rec center, there isn't going to be parks. And I think that's disappointing for people. I think commitments that are made should be kept. And I think in order for a livable community to be there, people want to move in and they want to have the facilities right away. They don't want to wait 10 or 15 years to get them. Thanks very much. Okay, the next round we'll move into is now the audience questions that are, wards, are mostly ward specific that came up in intermission. Uh, so once again, you have two minutes to answer each of these questions. Uh, each of you will have a chance to answer each question and you can once again use your poker chips if you should want to add to or rebut. Uh, the comment. So to start with, uh, in Pine Ridge, the, pl uh, the planning department erroneously awarded um, awarded a building contract uh, for a McDonald's on 52nd Street and 26th Avenue for development without community consult consultation. How would you prevent this from happening, Ray? Well, I was the one that discovered this last Wednesday when I was going to the bank. We discovered that uh, I thought they were repaving a parking lot and found out that they were building a McDonald's in the area. I was a little concerned, or I was a lot concerned, because of the fact that I was not circulated, the community was not circulated, and the school wasn't circulated. The uh, planning department, during one of the worst natural disasters in, uh, in Canadian history, decided that this would be a good time to approve this, re this uh, application without anybody's input, without any public consultation. I immediately met with the planning department last Thursday and indicated that this was not a good idea. Uh, is there a way to rescind it? We uh, had a, a meeting in Pine Ridge on Monday night with which about 100 people attended on very short notice, I might add. The applicant was there, the planners were there, the transportation department was there. The planning department took full blame for the application, saying that it should not have gone through, but it was too late to rescind the approval because it had already been approved. In the meantime, what's happened in the last week is uh, the uh, applicant has come forward and said that they would like to uh, mitigate any measures that can happen. So I'm having a meeting tomorrow morning with the applicant and uh, with the owner, and we'll see what happens from there. But technically, uh, he doesn't have to rescind his development permit because he's been approved by the City of Calgary, and the City of Calgary is to blame for it being there. Thank you. Great, Paul? Yes, sir. I do not have experience in how things work in the city. I think Mr. Ray Jones, he can, uh, he, he know better than we do. So, I think uh, I don't have much to say because I, I don't know how things work in the city hall about those, uh, like, uh, big, big projects. So to, to me, like, uh, they have some kind of, if you are a small business, it's, it's a hard when you are Big, corp big uh, corporation, I think uh, they have their ways to, to get through uh, City Hall. Thank you. Prippa, how would you deal as a councillor with existing illegal secondary suites, in particular in Ward 5? How I deal? I will uh, Yeah, how would you deal with existing illegal secondary suites? I'm, I'm supporting, uh, uh, so we should legalize and we should, uh, we can't afford to uh, take actions against uh, uh, anybody there. I think they are, they are supporting families and they are 
supporting economy and they are supporting affordable housing. So uh, I don't think so. We like we should uh, be looking into more into how we can legalize it uh, rather than how we can uh, penalize those those. Uh, uh, People are you know, trying to make their living and uh, trying to pay their mortgages. So I, uh, I'm, I'm with those uh, people who are uh, uh, trying to be uh, taking care about people. They, they maybe they don't have any place to live. So uh, especially in city of Calgary, we have the housing is not very cheap. So we should. Uh, encourage and we should uh, support, try to support whatever, whatever we can. Thanks. Thank you very much. Ray? Well, I don't think anybody supports the legalization of illegal suites. And one of the reasons being is the majority of illegal suites are not to code. And when they're not to code, that uh, over the last couple of years, we've had a number of deaths in these illegal suites. Uh, the responsibility should fall on the landlord in the event of something happening. Uh, I don't think they should be legalized. If they, at some point in future, council decides to uh, legalize suites across the city on a, on a blanket measure, then all the illegal suites should be brought up to code. I don't think that, uh, I think, uh, I would encourage people to phone 311 if you have one next door to you, because they shouldn't be there. They put a tax on the system, they put a, they're taxing the, uh, the uh, parking on uh, streets, and they shouldn't be there. Thank you. So next question, Ray. How do you feel about living in the communities that you represent? Uh, do you think it's important or necessary? I think it's very important. I've lived in my community for 37 years. I've, I've lived in Rundle and uh, I got very involved in my community over the years. I got involved as the president of the community, as the president of the sports organization, I was the president of the, or chairman of the Sportsplex Society, I was the vice president of the uh, Northeast Park Development, which became Prairie Winds. So I've had my involvement in it, and I think it's important to live where you are because how do you truly represent the people that are there if you don't know what their problems are? All right, thank you very much. Rick Paul? Uh, I don't think this is, it should be a big issue. Like, uh, I live in this community for, uh, for uh, six, seven years. Like, then we have problems with the schooling. Uh, I buy, bought a house in Cold Springs. Uh, it was next to... Uh, our Catholic school, but uh, in Winnipeg, my care they go to Catholic school system, but here I bought the house, they, they refuse, I think they, have, uh, they are different than Winnipeg. So then I have to, um, it was very uh, hard for my family to, to, to adjust for, to find a better schools. And then I have to move. Uh, my reason is to running uh, in this ward is, is a taxi, uh, I want to uh, work on this tax industry issue. It's a big issue for our Ward 5, and it's a major issue for the city of Calgary. And Mr., uh, I don't know I should mention, but I think Mr. Ray Jones, he play a big part in the taxi industry. Uh, uh, sorry, just one thing to interrupt. We don't yes, allow okay. reference to our opposing candidate. Okay, I was going to rebut it, but I won't now. So, okay, uh, whoever I'm running against in this ward, I think... Uh, uh, because I'm running in this ward, because I think I can solve a uh, problem for tax industry once for all. And it will be an example for other cities to, to solve, uh, to uh, how we can solve uh, big issues with, no, with very little. And I was uh, listening to a uh, uh, debate on, on a TV station, and those, those people, they ask how, how you can solve a tax industry without creating chaos. And there's very simple, uh, you can, if you're sincere, very simple uh, uh, steps can make a huge, huge difference how, uh, about this uh, important industry in our city and in this world. Okay, thank you very much, Pripa. Ray, you asked to rebut on this question. Well, I don't know if you're going to allow this or not, but I want to set a record straight here on taxis. If you are not referencing another candidate? No, I'm not going to reference the other candidate I'm going to reference taxes. City Council a number of years ago decided that there should be a, a, a board put together called TLAC, which is the Taxi Livery Advisory Committee. 
we wanted to take it out of the politicians' hands, and we did that. And we put up together a committee, and it was a committee made of hospitality and tourism people, as well as brokers, as well as drivers, and as well as people from the general public. TLAC committee reports to the TNT committee, which is the Transportation and Transit Committee of the City of Calgary, with their recommendations, with no input whatsoever from Alderman or the Mayor. And what happens is, is when they come down, they, they come out, they have meetings and the drivers are there and they have equal opportunity and equal say. So what happens is when they come forward with a recommendation, such as they did about three weeks ago, there was a recommendation this year for no fee increases, no meter increases, and to add 60 more plates to the system. So I just want to straighten that out a little bit. All right, thank you very much, Ray. Prit Paul has asked to rebut again on this. Yes, sir. The, 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 we are not solving the real issue. That's why we are ending up too many taxi places in, in city of Calgary. Uh, we no need. We need competition better than dispatch companies. Uh, that's the uh, like a main main problem for this uh, for for the uh, for this industry. And 900 taxi taxi drivers, they they work under uh, under brokerage taxi plates. 500 drivers they own taxi plates. I think what. Uh, what we are doing, we are trying to fight uh, taxi drivers own taxi plates or they work under brokers because we are not solving the real issue. Uh, like 900 taxi drivers, one of the taxi drivers, he was part of TLAC. Uh, like uh, the city, they, they, uh, because he was uh, uh, complaining about uh, black top taxi and uh, uh, their license is seized because they was, uh, uh, they was abusing bylaws and uh, uh, city, uh, what the TLAC they do, they, 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 they kick out this, this driver from TLAC, now he's kicked out from the industry. Now he's looking for a job to driving a truck. But, uh, he didn't do anything wrong, he just speak up. Uh, whatever I do, I speak up too, I lose my, my job and my future in taxi industry because I try to speak up. There's hundreds of cab drivers, they are not, they are basic right to speak up, it's not protected under, under this model of taxi industry. Uh, and, and the public, is, is not getting the best of it. Thank you very much. Uh, Rip Paul, the next question from the audience and the last question of the evening uh, is this one here. The Northeast is a fantastic multicultural area. How can we, how can we increase cultural exchange in this ward? Cultural exchange? Yeah, cultural exchange. Yeah, we should do, uh, just I think of one of the reasons I'm running because I think we need uh, even like people and in, in get into politics uh, from minorities. Not, not the reason because I have a turbine. I think we have experience from where we grow. We, sh we, we, we need to share those experiences. Uh, like even like in politics or, or in, in social uh, gathering, uh, we, we have to, uh, sometimes we are reluctant to criticize religions or social systems or particular ideologies. I think we, we are coming to the global community. We have to debate, we have to understand, we have to criticize uh, from everything from religion, social systems, uh, political ideology. So that's the what I have to say. Thank you very much. Ray? Well, I actually agree with my opponent for the first time tonight, minutely. But we do have, we do do a lot of cultural exchange. Over the last couple of weeks alone, uh, we've had two or three festivals at the Genesis Center. Uh, where everybody comes forward, uh, shows their dance, shows, shows their community, shows their types of food, and demonstrates that way. We have one coming up this weekend at uh, Falcon Ridge Community. So I think we do our bit, and like I said, we've invited, uh, I meet once a month with my community presidents, and we invite uh, all forms of people and communities to come to those to uh, spread their culture with us and our fabric. I think Calgary is a great quilt of uh, a makeup of ethnic communities and, uh, and uh, social society. So I, I think we do a good, good, good job of it in this city, accepting people and looking at their cultures. We have probably uh, a, a few hundred festivals every year, and they're well attended. Thank you very much. Uh, so now we'll move to the candidate summary. So uh, we start openings with Prit Paul. So Ray, would you like to start on uh, start with your closing statement? You have one minute each. Well, I don't need a minute. I can be really quick. First off, I'd like to thank all of you for being here. I'd like to thank Civic Camp for doing their job and doing all the communities, or all the wards and all the trustees as well. And I'd like to express the opinion that we all have that are in politics, 
the apathy is bad, and we hope that everybody comes out and votes on Election Day, regardless of who you vote for. Pippa? Yes, sir, I, I appreciate Mr. A. Jones' contribution for this community. And now I think it's a change, like Mr. Nees Nancy, he, he fight uh, his election because of election uh, 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 donations to civic politicians. That's the my main main issue, like uh, we, have, we need a cap on, on civic politicians, how much they can collect and spend. So my taxi, uh, I, I request uh, mainstream media to make tax industry issue uh, as an election, even like with Mr. Mayor. So uh, I, uh, I appreciate who uh, we, uh, everybody come here. So bless you and you are whatever you believe in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rip Paul. So I'd like to thank the candidates uh, very much for coming out tonight and I'd like to wish you both the best on election day. Uh, a very big thank you to Civic Camp and the citizens who have provided the questions for tonight. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, CBC Calgary, CJSW, Fast Forward Weekly, Metro Calgary, Calgary Sound Rentals, Calgary Roadrunners, Calgary Association of Parents and School Councils, Alberta Teachers Association, uh, and Students Association of Mount Royal University, the University of Calgary Students Union, the Calgary Foundation, and once again our host tonight, the Sunridge, uh, Sunridge Mall for the generous donation. Uh, again, I'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight and learning a little bit about your candidates for your award tonight. Uh, remember, Civic Camp is also hosting uh, trustee and mayoral forums that you're eligible to vote for, so please, come in, uh, please check the civiccamp.org website to see when those will be coming about. Uh, also, finally, good night, everyone, and thank you very much again for coming. And that closes our evening.